Um, it is my pleasure to be here to meeting all of you. And first, I would like to thank uh, the FSUT Global uh, Research Foundation for their kind uh, invitation. So I can be here to talk uh, two studies that's being supported by the foundation to you in the, uh, this evening. So the first one is a um, clinical study on early onset FSHD. And the second one is a study on third generation antisense as a potential treatment for FSHD. Um, so infantile onset of FSHD, it's a rare form of FSHD. It usually is about, uh, it's estimated around 4%. Um, of the total FSHD population. Um, patients usually develop <coughs> muscle weakness early and facial weakness before five years old and uh, shoulder girdle weakness before 10 years old. Um, the disease severity usually is uh, much more severe than the late onset FSHD and uh, patients um, likely become wheelchair dependent at young age. Uh, in addition, um, these patients have much higher chance to have retinal vasculopathy, that's uh, um, abnormal um, blood vessel in the retina, and uh, uh, without treatment, um, it may lead to blind blindness and they also have a higher chance to have uh, hearing loss. And uh, there are reports of um, a defect in the central nervous system uh, in these uh, patients too. So when we start this uh, collaborative study, the goal is to really to understand the, this specific patient population more, it including increase the understanding of their clinical phenotype and the effects of the disease to quality of life and establish a standardized assessment battery for this disease, which will be critical for the future treatment, uh, clinical studies. And also, we collect blood samples from these patients um, for a discovery of potential um, candidate biomarkers which can also be critical for the future clinical study. So the study is led by Dr. Jing Ma at the Alberta Children's Hospital. And she's a physician uh, really in charge of the clinical aspect of the study. And I am actually more focused on the biomarker discovery in the study. And the study is uh, conducted by the Cooperative International your muscular research group, um, brief, uh, short for Synergy. So the Synergy is a clinical research network, actually uh, worldwide, many sites in uh, different country. And they are major neuromuscular referral centers. And uh, among all the sites, there are 14 sites actually join the study, and two sites actually are in Australia. In the study, um, we aim at to recruit 50 patients. And um, these um, participants actually will go through different assessments for us to understand the disease presentation, including basic physical um, examination, cognitive assessment, and questionnaire for um, their um, how the disease affect their life and also a self-assessment um, of their muscle function. And also, there will be clinical evaluator assessments. Those are the uh, studies of the uh, different manual and uh, quantitative mus muscle strength measurements, as well as uh, functional studies. And if it, it, the um, site is uh, it's, uh, equipped to um, conduct hearing, vision, and speech assessments, then these will be done too. And at the end, we collect blood sample for a biomarker uh, study. 
So um, the recruitment uh, was done uh, last year, and we actually recruited 52 individual with early onset FSHD. And about half of them are females, a little bit more than half. And this is their average age, mean age, and also the size of the 4 so which is uh, relatively small and which is uh, um, not very surprising because uh, the patient with more severe symptoms tend to have smaller, um, lower number of repeat. And uh, currently, we are actually um, analyzing data and focus on four different uh, area. And these are the manuscripts in preparation, and we're going to um, talk, uh, focus on quality of life afterwards. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the candidate biomarker study. So a biomarker uh, is a biological feature or differences or change in your sample that allowed you to, uh, in a way, to be an indicator, uh, in our purpose, to be an indicator of disease state. So we know whether the disease is very severe or not by actually, hopefully, by looking at this specific um, uh, biological feature. It can be a protein in your blood, for example. So um, we don't need to go through all the different mus muscle functional testing. And for example, or in a clinical study, we don't need to spend months or years to know whether a treatment is effective. And hopefully, we can have an easier, um, sim more simple measurement to help us to know that a treatment is effective as early as possible. Um, so that's a, um, a simple explanation of why we are actually looking for a biomarker. So in this study, this, we actually um, conduct a protein profiling using mass spec and to examine proteins in blood from participants and then compare them to um, healthy individuals as well as uh, individuals with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So the reason to do that is to identify proteins that actually change in patient sample compared to the control as well as find out whether this change is specific to the disease, or it's actually um, something that's shared between uh, different muscle disorders. So by doing that, we actually identify, so this is one example. So um, we identify this protein, glutathione peroxidase 3, which is a major antioxidant in circulation in blood sample um, that was um, much lower in FSHD um, blood sample. So this is the data to show you, basically the numbers means uh, how many hits the, de the instrument actually detect that specific protein. So if you have a higher hit, that suggests that uh, the protein is more abundant in the blood sample. So as you can see that in control sample, there's a, there was a 10 hit, and in Duchenne, these are different ages. We picked them because this is the age range of this um, FSHD sample we analyzed. And you can see they are also in similar range, but the, in the FSHD sample, it seems that this protein was particularly low. So then the next thing we did was to, do, um, to validate the data. So what we did was to perform a GPX activity assay, so to check the activity of this enzyme. And we found that um, the protein activity was indeed a lower in the um, blood sample. Uh, from patient with FSHD. And when we group the patient into the ones with a more mi with milder uh, disease severity and the more severe disease uh, clinical presentation, and then we found significant differences between these two groups. And this is actually a different way to show you the same data. Um, basically, you can see these are different. This, this is a total severity score. And when you, uh, this is when the, the higher score means uh, more severe. And so patients at this end actually have lower GPX activity in this case. So the question will be whether this is actually a good biomarker. We really don't know at this point. Because a very important thing is to actually look at the longitudinal data from the same patients. So when the disease progress, whether 
this protein actually will become even lower um, if it actually correlate with disease severity or correlate with the disease progression. And then maybe this will be a potential good biomarker um, to help us to uh, evaluate the disease state in this case. So currently we are actually at, we added three additional follow-up visits, which is uh, supported by the foundation as well as the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical company, Atire. Um, we are adding additional uh, different type of uh, molecules for the biomarker discovery studies and also the companies are supporting um, additional MRI um, assessment for the, for the patient. So I'm going to switch gear um, to the second project, that's the uh, third generation antisense oligo. So as uh, David just uh, mentioned, um, in healthy individual, this chroma chromatic region is tightly packed, so the gene DOX4 cannot be expressed. And in FSHD1 and FSHD2, this region become loosely packed, and that's when the DOX4 is expressed, and then the RNA of DOX4 is made. So one strategy to um, treat the disease is actually directly targeting these molecule and to reduce it. So just basically try to degrade it and then uh, get rid of them. So one of the strategy is antisense, to use antisense oligonucleotide. So um, the molecule we are testing here that's supported by the FSD Global Foundation is the third generation antisense oligonucleotide. So as you can imagine, there was first generation and second generation. But basically uh, what happened it was uh, this uh, molecule, is, uh, this compound um, is from Idera Pharmaceutical. And what uh, they have been doing was making all different modifications to either the backbone of this um, oligonucleotide. Basically, that's a small stretch of RNA or DNA, single-stranded in this case. Um, and also, um, they um, made a different uh, modification and sometimes make, mix them together in the stretch, in this stretch of uh, DNA or RNA. And uh, the third generation, the modification they made was actually to link the head of two stretch of oligonucleotide together using a link here. And the reason they did that was they found out because this region is usually immunogenic. So that's actually the region our immune system recognized and attacked it. And that actually reduced the efficiency of this molecule to target any uh, RNA we want to get rid of. So um, that's the modification they did. So all the modification basically is try to increase the stability so it actually can last longer in the cells and reduce toxicity and also reduce immunogenicity like I just mentioned, uh, which is important. And so it's not removed by the cell once it's delivered. And the very important feature of this molecule is can be delivered directly. Without, any, without help with other conjugation or agents. And that's particularly important for FSHD because uh, it's not as leaky, the muscle is as, not as leaky like Duchenne muscular dystrophy. So we want something that can actually get into muscle. So um, for, for this study, so what happened is um, just a simple way to say how this uh, molecule actually can reduce DOX4 so basically, the, this molecule will identify DOX4 transcripts, the DOX4 RNA, and then bind to it. And once they bind to it, our, our cells actually understand this is not our own. So they will actually um, attack it, and then basically just degrade them, and then uh, that will remove the, to the toxic DOX4 RNA in the cells. So for the study, we actually have uh, immobilized control myoblasts for healthy individuals. We have uh, FSHD myoblasts that didn't receive treatment of these third generation antisense, and then cells that's treated. After 40, 24 hours, we collected RNA from these cells and to check to see if DOX4 is uh, reduced by the treatment. 
as well as um, they are genes that's known, controlled by DOX4. So when the DOX4 is high, usually these genes are high also. So we want to see if they are also reduced after DOX4 is reduced. So this just show you that if you focus here, the first one is actually DOX4, and these three are the other genes that's controlled by DOX4. And you can see that the first one here actually show you that the healthy cells um, does not express DOX4, and the FSHD cells express DOX4, and then these are different concentrations of the 3GA. And when we increase the concentration, the amount of DOX4 actually went down. And it's also true for uh, the other genes, especially these two. And the next thing we did was to see if the treatment can actually correct some defects people have been reporting, reported, uh, observed in mild tubes. So this picture actually show you that these are single cells and you can see these round nuclei inside each single cells. Um, like David mentioned, these are the places that the genetic material DNA chromosomes are stored. Um, but interestingly, if you look at these, you can see these um, so-called myotubes, and that's very unique for muscle cells because the muscle single cells can actually fuse together and form a multi-nucleated cell, and that's how our muscle fiber in our muscle also formed. So this is really uh, interesting and unique feature of the muscle cells. And if you look at here, you actually see a myotube that's very, very skinny. And that's actually something we're not supposed to see. Um, we don't usually observe that in control, like healthy uh, cell culture, but we actually see these in the um, FSHD culture. So this is just the data to show you that on the first panel, basically just show you the total nuclei, that means total number of cells in the culture, and we don't really see uh, significant differences among our different um, uh, group of samples. So again, this is unaffected healthy cells, and this is uh, affected FSHD cells, and these are the cells that's treated with different um, compounds that's targeting different parts of the DOX4. And but if you look at the fusion index, this is actually a measurement to tell you how many of the nuclei are inside the tubes. So you can see that uh, in control, it's about 40% of the nuclei, but in the FSHD, it's actually fewer. So it seems they don't fuse as well as the control. So that's one of the defects. Um, but then the treatment at this low concentration of one of the uh, 3GA actually restore the fusion index in this uh, specific culture. And when we look at the last one, actually it's telling you the number of atrophic myotube. Myo so that's the skinny ones we just saw. And they actually show you that we don't have many in the control cells, and we have a lot in the untreated uh, myo myofiber, myoblast culture. And uh, the number actually um, was reduced by treatment of different um, 3GA compounds. So the next slide basically show you when we actually increase the concentration, we basically, we got similar results, but then you actually see more uh, 3GA compounds that's effective and also reduce the atrophic number of atrophic myotubes. So what we are doing now is um, so a quick summary. So this treatment basically show a dose-dependent knockdown of DOX4. Um, when we use higher concentration, actually it suppress DOX4 more, and it also rescued deficit of myoblast differentiation, either partially or completely depends on which um, value we measured. And um, we are actually trying to change, the, use, test different concentrations and to uh, find out what's the best concentration that can um, rescue the, um, really knock down the dark void and rescue the cell phenotype. And we are also um, 
conducting in vivo studies. So we inject these compounds into mouse model of F FSHD. So that's actually a FSHD model that's not published yet, um, developed by Dr. Peter Jones. And um, we are um, using that model and to see if uh, the uh, 3GA can effectively knock down. We are actually doing that now, right now. We just did injection and collected the muscle. So we will know very soon. So the last is uh, acknowledgement slides. We just really want to thank all the participants with FSHD as well as the healthy control that uh, make this possible for our clinical study to be uh, conducted. And also Dr. Ma, who is the lead uh, investigator of the clinical study, as well as all the principal investigator at different sites. Um, also, um, the people who did um, 3GA tests in my lab, people at the company who provided the 3GA, as well as technical support, which has been very important, and this is where we get the immortalized cells. Thank you. Should be able to comment on uh, their clinical trials of uh, their uh, Resolaris uh, drug right. and I, uh, when right. involved in it? Yes. Um, I think my, my, uh, my knowledge of the, the, their clinical study pretty much is uh, limited to their uh, uh, news release. So I think um, at this point, the number of number of participants, the sample size is still very low. It seems promising. Um, um, it seems the strength in, increase in uh, that few uh, participants. I think they are actually conducting a, a larger trial at this point. I think really a longer and more participants are needed to actually to really conclude. That's my opinion on the result. 